Welcome punters, here we are for a bit of uh, punning Melbourne style and by popular demand, the punters punner, Dan Kelly. Welcome oh, back potty. mate. Back for a couple of pots with pots. That's it. Be lovely. How are you mate? Oh, I'm real good mate, I'm good. Oh, that's good. Bit of a dusty day there at Flemington on Sunday, but um, no, it's one I'm happy to put behind me. It yep. was, um, if I just had a look at uh, the work I did on Saturday and the markets and the finalist peas, it was a pretty reasonable set, but the results were a bit ordinary and yeah. I knocked off about 4% of my bank on Saturday, so... Which knows? Happens, we'll, we'll dust ourselves off and um, fight back next week. The rest of the week wasn't too bad. Got off to a good start there at Packham last week and it was all okay. So well, I, was, I was the opposite. I just had a very grubby start and uh, you know, I got tangled up in the wet track at Swan Hill on Monday and got tangled up in a race there on Wednesday with you and the favourite bloody the thing I was betting against got, yeah. came out, it's got scratched. Then I sort of got too heavily involved and then, then, then um, but Coleraine was good, you know, so a couple of winners there. So I sort of had the, I had the slow start but finished off strong. Anyway, but it's just the way it goes, mate. Just peaks and troughs, and that's it. Just got to wait your turn. Is, I, all week, the dirtiest I was was after that Geelong race because it was a race I didn't like. I, and I was, the only reason I fell into it was because of that Sistine Saint. Sistine Saint. And when it was scratched, I thought they've got me. They've got me. I'm, I'm tied into a race yeah. that I don't want to be involved in. That's exactly the same thing. Oh, exactly the so same. Angry. Same with me. Same with me. Exactly. And I went my heart my sleeve. It's you know how angry I was. Yeah. Anyway, we move on. We move on. Yeah, so just on. a quick word on Flemington. I know that. Uh, Vince and Ralphie have done a podcast this morning. I haven't heard it, but Liam O'Keefe just caught me. Um, they were sort of suggesting that there was a slow patch on the home turn. I think it was all to do with the wind. It was nothing to do with the surface. So I'd say that but just the way the wind funnels down, particularly if it's coming directly from the north, it comes over the showground, just drops down into there, it really hits them yeah. right on the point of the home turn. Right, yeah. So I would suggest that's what uh, Vince is picking up in yeah. his data. Yeah. So Ralph's coming for lunch, we'll talk to him about that. Yep. Um, good. The rest of the day, the straight races, it was a race to the outside fence, and I just think um, I'm getting really annoyed. Every time I hear the interview, it just really gets my goat up. But we've got an amateur given a really strong platform in both the paper and RSN in Matt Stewart to lambast people, and he ambushes the track managers every week. So the first question he asks Liam O'Keefe is, What have you done with the tools? You know, and that, so they, they're sort of paranoid about using them to an extent, and of course, you end up with a situation where because of the way the wind was when they watered the other day, that there was a lane on the outside fence that everyone wanted to get to in the straight races. I mean, that, that sort of thing, no. it's, not, it's not, nothing anyone could have done about it, but it can be really unfair and it can be really dangerous. So, and I think that's why Haydock won, he got to the right lane. And um, if they had their time again, I think Damien Oliver and um, whoever rode Grant Rosso would have held that outside yeah. lane. But um, anyway, well done to Luke Curry. The day itself is a really funny day because we lost a lot of a lot of horses missed a run because of the Caulfield meeting being abandoned two weeks ago. So an awful lot of runners appeared there on Saturday oh, with a month between runs. Yeah, it's yeah. very strange. So, so, so. Better for it. Just back yeah. to Al Curry, I don't know, I've said it before, but just I mean he doesn't ride a lot, but so I take note when he comes he only really because of his weight and everything, he's only riding a couple of days a week. But when he appears in the bush, just and just doing the post race video comments, he just doesn't make any blues at all. Yeah. He's such a good rider. He's a punter's rider, yeah. you know, put your money on him, you know, he yeah. just doesn't make many blues, or he's a really talented rider, but he's had weight issues, but... And you can tell when he's confident on one, when he's sort of, when he's assertive, he's just really good. Yeah. Sometimes he second guesses himself a little bit, and yep. and that, that tends to bring him done, but when he's... I think the Mac When he's got his, he's switched on, he goes, yeah, we're going to win on this horse, he really does do a good And the Mac gives him, Mac, he knows the Mac McAvoy horse is a fit, yeah. you know, so he can, he can be a bit aggressive, he was back one of his yesterday, and... Um, yeah, he just made a good thing of it. You know. yeah. And the other point I want to note, something that you mentioned a while back, Dick. I'm not quite sure what the change is there. There's a few rumours floating around, but um, the Waller runners were deadly there on Saturday. The only one that didn't run well was O'Rachel, was one I steamed into. Um, oh, I saw but that. Al Ward, who I backed at Sandown the previous run, and couldn't run down scholarly, albeit against some bias yeah. that day. Uh, it, it went really well. The only reason I didn't back it that day is I couldn't imagine it getting to the outside from Barrier 4, yeah. getting back in the field. And... People watch the replay there, the seas just opened up early in the straight there for that horse that come across, across, across yeah. hills, and it gets to the outside, and I was thinking, oh dear, oh dear, yeah. how have you let this horse go around against your pots? Yeah. No, all he meant to, his credit while he made the changes, he, he, yeah. he got rid of Justine for whatever reason, and put in the new girl, and since I think he's maybe changed, made, changed a couple of things, and as I said, you could sort of see that the jump outs are a bit sharper, and yeah. a bit more intent, and mm, so I'm um, trans translated on Race well, for me, they're well and truly on my radar now. Yeah. 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 They seem to have got it right. So anyway, that, that'll do us for Flemington. Let's just not spend any more time on it. So um, let's just have a bit of a chat, DK, about um, 
the algorithms and some things that have happened at the well, tab and uh, yeah, that's yes. the thing. And we've got some viewer, some some of the viewers have written in some good questions, so we'll get on to them as well. Well, two things happened. Well, I got a, someone let me know that there was a there was a, a, a broom put through the TAB trading floor on middle of last week, um, similar to what happened at Sportsbet with some with some guys we know we've, we've had on the show, Mark and Howard Walter, and you know, long time employees, great form analysts, but sorry, there's no spot here for you anymore. And, Sounds like a similar thing happened during the week at, at, the, at the tab, and um, and then I was also, and then so that that happened, and so you know that was I was alerted to that, and then you know, I just didn't worry about it. But then I'm sitting, had a, had a reason to be sitting at my desk there at eight o'clock on Saturday night, and I was just flicking through the Wodonga meetings and seeing these things and TAB fluctuations, which I've never seen before. Right? Two one horse was six fifty into one seventy, another one was eight dollars into a dollar seventy, and into a dollar fifty five as I was sitting there watching it with just the and then just hovering over the price change on dynamic gods. It was just getting switched off every two or three, five minutes, you know, a roll and um, but don't tell me the two. Were, were they pushing any of the others out or were they oh, not, a massive Not at that stage, not at that stage because but um, but I didn't have, notice that I was just as I said I was, I'd had a few red wines and I yeah. just noticed it and I threw it out on Twitter because John Walter had mentioned it, it happened at Forbes last Monday as well. So mm. I said don't tell me that TAB's going along the, the lines of the other corporates whereas just letting the computer programs control the prices and, 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 and staff having minimal input. But, but I then I had another think about it on Sunday and, it, and it's, it, it's more of a make sense now that it's gone this way. Um, when Crownbet started, but they, 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 I was just say that when Crownbet started, they, they didn't go, the first bike they didn't go after was a marketing manager or a, um, you know, a, a, the best form analyst in the business. The first bike they employed was the head? It was their head of Quants, mm. and Quants is their mathematician group, and the people who build these algorithms, build these computer programs. He was the bloke, first bloke they targeted, and went and got him. He's a superstar. We we know him, and um, and uh, and and that's and this is a pommy bookmaking thing. This is you know, so that's why that's why so that I can see why now it's gone. That's three or four, five years ago, and now it's sort of gradually now they're sweeping out the staff. Automatic and automatic pricing sort of is, is mm. going to be the norm by the look of the clocks. It seems that way, Deacon. And I, I just say to the punters out there, we're, we're going to have to change our behaviour a little bit. We're, we're all going to have to just wait till race morning because you're not going to get a decent bet on at, the, at these big odds. They're going, to, they're going to bet you probably to win a monkey or something like that, I would say, or maybe a thousand. The TAB? Yeah, yeah TAB, yeah. It's been nice if you because you can sort of, you know, they've been a fair bookie. You could, they bet you to win sort of 2,000 yeah. or so, what your rules were. My rules were. To win about 1500, sometimes to win two and sometimes to win one, but I was generally always to win 1500 or something, which is more than the rest. Yeah, it sort of made it sort of worthwhile to show your hand to them, you know. And they didn't really shop the price too much, yeah. But they didn't have a savage algorithm turn off like a lot of the other corporates. So there's one particular corporate I can't bet with because they turn it off 10 rolls and back your back, yeah. you know, the money appears somewhere else. So, um, but now I thought, yeah, so the, that's what I thought the behavior changes now, sort of. Going to be showing your hand early, which I'll... A, I think it's a, it's a tri the intriguing part for me is that the big teams have obviously tweaked all this, and they're using that algorithm against the corporates to man man well, manipulate the market wherever they want to well, move. Well, that's what I've sort of know? started having to do the sort of, you know, your sort of your savers and your your things that you think are overs in the middle of the market or high in the market. They're the stuff you can sort of yeah. throw something on in the morning, and then um, yeah, you're, you're going to you're really generally you're, the biggest stuff. Well, you've got to wait. You've got to wait for liquidity in the market. You want to get a, a decent bet on anyway, but um, just hang on till till the end. Till the, yeah. the, they've got still got thirty percent in their favour. Yes. You know. And After nine o'clock race day, you know you can you can work with it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But prior to that, all we're doing is helping them shape their markets, knock out, yep. felt out the um, mistakes. And that's what so then they get to nine o'clock on race morning, and as you said, they've got twenty-five to thirty percent in their favour. And all the big errors are being bellowed out by punters that aren't really getting on for any. Well, I think know, that's the reason. Really and then it just all that creates is people complaining about it. Well, why, why why pay why pay staff or traders 50, 70 grand a year? Yeah. When when we can knock off bet these blokes and they'll probably win twenty or thirty grand off us a year, bet them yeah. to win a thousand each race, and they're telling us that should be that should be that's a five to two chance, that's not a six dollar chance yeah. instead of paying the traders, which is a shame it's gone that way. You now I've got young blokes. It's a shame. They contact me on Twitter. They see me on the show. We know what we do, and they say, "Oh, you know, they're really passionate." Oh, I'm 18, 20. I really love to get into racing. Four man lesson and everything. Um, where do you suggest I start? Uh, I'm throw my hands in the air. I used to be sports bet because Jared Toomey was there. They had the Mark Reed database. If you see a junior trader, drop at sports bet. Go for it. 
But now, where can they go? What do yeah. I say? I say, well, maybe send a letter to RBL and Andre Casse or someone in the form department might give you a, a go in the, as a junior, but well, what do you do? You know, anyway. Yeah, I, just, I know it's a, it's a really tough thing to do, but if we were all able to just keep our powder dry until, you know, as close to nine o'clock on race day as possible, it just, it's, See, it's not going to happen. It's one of Matty, Taylor, well, one of Matty Taylor's bones, the, uh, and, and Marco, the Marcos, the, uh, the, the people who bet between eight and nine. Yeah. They are a real pain. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot hold on. Yes, I know. Like, I'm just saying that the way it's been with the tabs and stuff, it's been, it's been reasonable to bet early. And mm. I used to do a lot of it myself. Mm. But the way it's going, no, it's, a... it's becoming a... It's, it's not even any good for the ones that are doing it. Like, yeah. They're not getting on for what they want That's right. anyway. That's right, you should show your hand. So, so um, Big time. Yeah, I think it's um, it's something that punters need to think about. Mm. You, know, you know what I mean? Particularly if there's a, if, if the horse has just been, has been well enough hidden that it's going to take someone to back it for it to move. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's right. Sometimes they just make a blue because they've got the V team doing the pricing or whatever. Mm. But more often than not, they're, they're well hidden. Yeah, uh, no. they're, they're best left alone anyway. It's all, it's all a shame, mate. But anyway, but that's yeah, so that just looks like it's the way. But I, I, I've been no big for betting later anyway. I've tried to train myself to bet later. Yeah. And it's, you know, I think it's better. It's better. You know, I can't get the best total or anything, but I had a bet fair SP bet yesterday. Mm. It was okay, you know. Yeah. I just put the bet on and sort of forgot about it and it sort of put some of it early in the time and put some on bet for SP and, and um, yeah, so. Well, I do a lot of best tape betting and um, I mean, uh, we've got a question about bet fair we'll get to uh, in one of the later parts and we've got a couple of stories to get mm. to as well. But um, yeah, I think I think one of the big changes in the market and, it's, um, and I think it's something to do with the VAP and the corporates getting more control and uh, you know, it's a bit about Betfair as well, but the market really is now from nine o'clock race morning through race jump. That's, there's a massive amount of fluctuation massive. in that period leading up to the final 25 minutes when the VAP kicks in. So you've really got to be involved in that period, yep. not just that final 25 yep. minutes. Right. You've got to be involved there some, somewhere, That's, trying to catch them at the right point. It is, it is, and the fear of missing out, I mean, you've, yeah. And, and, you're trying to do other work at the same time, but yeah. I keep glancing at I've got the dynamic right there, and yeah. I've sort of got there some alarm set and everything. I'm trying to do some video comments. I'm looking as it going off. What are, they, what are they backing? Or if one goes off, what are the what are the teams backed and that? And why are they backed it? Sort of a bit time consuming trying to. It but is. you've got to stay on top of it to, yeah. to try and catch the best price. I mean, so, like if I have really good reasons for marking one shorter than the market, I just go and take the price. But at least two thirds of my money. So it's a good one to mention. Yes, they race one at um, Bendigo Civil Guard. To me, it was really easy to mark five to two. They were betting five dollars, I think. So I just took the five dollars. Some of that subscribers, a lot of them were taking five dollars, and um, you know that started something in the marketplace. And then one of the big teams sort of chimed in. But then it, drew, it got back out to four dollars at the jump. Off the poly, didn't worry you. Oh well, you know. But you're just, you just you factor you, that into the price. That's a good thing to discuss, DK, okay? because we've just got a couple of minutes before we get to the end of part one. The poly track this season has been really interesting. Particularly at Packenham, they've been running really slow times, and the form's been translating the turf. Well, mm. Have you got any theory on why they've been running such slow times? Um, know, since, particularly since they've done whatever they did, they did some kind of renovation, I believe. About yeah, they've a been, month yeah, and they've kicked, yeah, they've had, hor they've had problems with it. They've meeting transferred two weeks ago and things like that. Um, not, well, I, I, not really. I mean, well, I so think looking at the time, it's been racing like a. Say a slow six, testing type track. It's got something to do so, with the kickback and the issues they've had, I'd say. With, um, I mean, I always been in love with Civil Guard. Just they just seem like a, you know, rock solid bet in a race full of queer. No, I've so. been following. I backed it. Uh, it nearly beat me first up or something, so I backed it second up, and it just got beat. And then I, I sort of dropped off yesterday. I just thought, oh, well, no, but anyway. For the taller punters, the horse that beat it at um, Packenham positively high. I think it's a really nice horse. Anyway, that'll do us for uh, part one.